Okay, so hi everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. This time we will talk about camera movement and switch light and we will break this up into two parts. So first of all, let's talk about the car chase scene because that's quite simple. And then we will talk about a new technique with green screen compositing and the treadmill. And the magic once again is being done by switch light. And you will see that the overall approach for this scene was actually pretty simple too. If we take a look at our setup here, you can see we have our switch light plane. And the switch light plane is parented to our car. And there are multiple ways to do that. For example, you could use a switch light plane and then select your car and then hit the shortcut Control P and parenting the object to the car and keeping the transform. Or like we would do in this example, we can use a constraint. Uh, so you will have to select your switch light plane and then go on the constraints and then for example use a child of constraint and then choose your rig as the target and then for example select the root bone. By the way we use the rigger car add-on which is still out there and still works uh, thanks to John Yarn 3 d who provided a fixed add-on for Blender version 4.1 and above. So please check out the video and the description where you will find all the necessary infos and of course the add-on. And then once the car starts to drive, the switch light plane will follow along. So that's the overall approach for the movement. And then let's take a look at the light setup. And as you can see, we got a pretty simple scene going on. So really like a few assets, a street elements, some street lights, some rocks, and later on some trees. But the overall scene is really, really simple. And the light setup is also pretty simple. So as you can see, we got some big area lights emulating the moonlight. And then we got some smaller area lights that will emulate the passing street lights. And then we used some tree assets to break up the light of the different street lights. And that will create some nice shadows inside of the car once the car passes the different street lights. And last but not least, always keep in mind that you can create visual interest by using some fog or mist elements. In this case, it was pretty simple because we used the world shader and use a volume scatter node. And if we take this way, you can see how simple our overall scene looks. But once we add in a little bit more mist or haze, things start to look a little bit better and the haze or the fog will break up the light and, and make the lights a little bit more diffused. And this helps with the overall look of the scene because it makes it a little bit more moody. Okay, so let's take a look at the next piece of the puzzle. And inside of the car, pretty important, we got two more lights going on. So as you can see, we got our spotlight here. And the spotlight will give us a constant light source so we can really see the actor's face throughout the whole shot. If we would hide this light, we would have a pretty underexposed shot, even though some of the passing lights will give us a little bit more information, still things look not that good. And as you can see, there's one more light, and this is in the bottom part of the car, and it is called the bottom light, and this is simply a point light that will give us a little bit more of information and will emulate a little bit of the display or controls of the car, and will break up the face uh, like you would have in a horror light setup, and it will lit the actor's face from the bottom. But in combination with our front light, this creates kind of like a nice shape with a checkerboard setup with bright parts, dark parts, bright parts, dark parts, and that create kind of like visual interest to our overall shot. Actually pretty simple. And then of course you have to parent the light, so the spotlight and the bottom light to the car as well. But other than that, it's really, really simple. And that will create a cool looking scene with a pretty simple overall setup. Okay, so let's take a look at some other shots from the short film. And as you might have seen, uh, we used a pretty cool tool, which was a treadmill. And really, this is a game changer when it comes to green screen compositing, because you can really take a long walk or a run or whatever you need without moving the green screen, without leaving the space where you can key out stuff and really create complex movement out of nothing, just because we are moving in place. Okay, and if we take a look at our harbor scene, things are similar. So we have our actor, of course, 
And around our actor, we created a lot of different assets to create visual interest and depth. So we have a foreground, a midground, a background, and a deep background. And if we take a look at our light setup, it's actually pretty similar to our car scene. So we have this very important practical fill, which helps to emulate the light of our lantern. And if we would hide this light, things will look pretty bad because you can see our normal map really, really breaks. And that's because of the shadows uh, that are pretty harsh and will give us a pretty unrealistic look. Uh, so that's a pretty important one. The other spot is just for the visibility of the spot inside of the fog. And the other light, as you can see, is above our actor and is not visible in the frame. And this is pretty important because this light will emulate the moonlight. And if we would hide this light, things would have actually the same mistake because now we have pretty harsh shadows, a horror light setup. But once again, look at the face things start to look really, really weird. And that's because of the normal map. So you always need to have some sort of fill light that really, really helps uh, with the normal map. Uh, you get the right impression because this light emulates moonlight and maybe the practical light in the back. And in this case, this street lamp here. But without these two additional lights, you cannot really create believable and a little bit more realistic shots. So always keep in mind that you need to have especially two or maybe three lights only pointing to your actor or actress. And this is really, really important because if you just lit the whole scene with an HDRI, your switch light plane would not look as good. And the movement is really simple once again, because if we take a look at our switch light plane, you can see we only have two keyframes, one at the starting point and then one at the very end. So the actor is moving from right to left. And the same thing goes for our camera. So we only have two keyframes here as well. One for the starting point, one for the end point. And my tip would be to select all your keyframes in this case, and then hit the shortcut T. And that will bring up the interpolation and keyframe menu. And I would advise you to use the linear instead of the Bezier interpolation. So you just uh, get rid of the ease in and ease out function and your movement will look a little bit better because you don't have any easing at the beginning and no easing at the very end. And things look a little bit better as long as we assume that the actor is moving constantly. And then all you have to do is take all the other rules in account. So the light setup, the movement, of course, our overall moody scene, and then things are pretty similar. And if we take a look at our third example, things are the same. So we have two big soft boxes to really have an even lit green screen setup. And then we placed our actor in front of the camera. So he's moving towards the camera and walking in place with the treadmill. And we use this setup for our bridge scene, which looks like this. So we have our actor who's walking in place, but of course he's moving forward because we keyframed the position. Then we got our tunnel asset. And in the background, there's someone with, uh, I don't know, kind of like bad intentions of killing our hero or whatsoever. And actually that's all there's to it. And really, if we take a look at our scene setup, it's pretty embarrassing how simple this is. So as you can see, I use the 3D scan of a tunnel and just placed randomly some rubbish asset throughout the tunnel. And really all I have to do was create different keyframes for my camera, for the switch light plane. And as you can see for a second switch light plane, which was drum roll <laughs> me again, because I just made a second shot with me walking as a hooded stranger and looking like the usual suspect of a robbery or something like that. So this is really an important lesson because you can create complex shots with different actors and actresses with only one setup, with only one camera, without the need for any actor to be at the same time at the same place. So you can literally put them together later on in the shot and it would still feel like one big production with multiple actors on set. And if we take a look at our light setup, you can see that I've worked with only a few practical lights, which in this case were some LED lamps that I've placed throughout the tunnel. And behind that lamp, there is always a point light and the point light will give the real light power. And if we turn these lights off, you can see how underexposed the shot would be. So the lamps only have some sort of emission material 
So we need to enhance the practical lights with real point lights and this will give us the illusion of an illuminated tunnel and that will help to create better looking shots with practical lights within our scene. So you can see once again how simple the overall approach is, how powerful this technique is because we can create multiple actors out of one and we have pretty powerful possibilities to create dynamic shots even though we're just walking in place inside of our do-it-yourself green screen studio in our living room. So that's kind of like the goal of this project to really create complex visually interesting and dynamic looking shots with a pretty pretty low budget and even no real actors but still creating some sort of interesting shots. And in the last part of this tutorial series we will talk about real movement on set using some new tools that will help us with the tracking process in the post-production. So pretty cool stuff, so stay tuned for the next part. But until there, thanks for watching and see you next time.